Welcome to the deep dive. Today, well, we're heading onto the solar system for something pretty special. We really are. We're going to look at the uh, incredible transformation of Comet 3 Itelis. Right. This thing has just changed dramatically, like uh -huh. going from a fairly compact object to this active glowing spectacle. Yeah, it's quite the change. And we'll dig into not just what happened, but, you know, why it's important for understanding how our universe works. Exactly. And this isn't just theory, is it? No, not at all. This deep dive, it's based on very recent, very precise observations. We're really looking at celestial mechanics in action. Mm -hmm. A fantastic example of a comet evolving basically in real time. And these changes, they give us some unique clues about what the solar system was made of way back when. Okay, so our mission here is to track Comet 3 Atlas. We start in July 2025 when it looked, well, pretty modest. Mm -hmm. And then jump just one month later to August, where it's suddenly enormous. Mm. What forces are doing this? And I guess, crucially, what secrets does this big reveal tell us about where it came from, maybe? Exactly. It's origins, the early solar system. And this isn't just some abstract thing happening light years away. Yeah. It's like watching the universe tell its own story, mm -hmm. right? So why should you, listening right now, care about some distant comet? Right. Because its transformation is such a powerful look at the forces that shaped everything. Yeah. It's like a window straight into our cosmic past. Yeah, absolutely. So let's start back in July 2025. Picture this comet, 3 Iatilas, as it was seen then. The sources call it a compact structure. Right. So imagine something kind of contained, held together out there in space, relatively quiet, you know, an unassuming icy thing just doing its orbit. And that term, compact structure, it's quite telling for a comet. Okay. How so? Well, it means it was likely in a pretty dormant state. See, when a comet is far from the sun, the ices, water ice, CO2 ice, all that frozen gas, they stay pretty much frozen solid. Because it's cold out there. Exactly. Extremely cold. So you get very little sublimation, which is the ice turning straight into gas. Uh -huh. So back in July, 3 i less was basically this... Uh, pristine icy core, the nucleus, maybe a tiny faint haze around it, the coma, but really small. It was the quiet beginning. The ancient core, just waiting. That's Comet 3 I at least, the quiet version. Mm -hmm. So we have this compact thing in July, but then August 2025, oh. wow. The observations just became, well, astonishing. They really did. It didn't just wake up. It sort of erupted, became yeah. something much, much bigger. Yeah, erupted is a good way to put it. And these observations, they came from the Gemini South Telescope, right? That's right, capturing these incredible changes. And the numbers are just wild. Mm -hmm. Comet 3 I less grew this teardrop tail, get this 56,000 kilometers long. 56,000? Yeah, I mean, that's like, what, four times the diameter of Earth? Just the tail. It's immense. And the coma, that fuzzy cloud around the center, that blew up to 19,000 kilometers across. 19,000. Again, huge. These aren't small tweaks. This is a massive, fast transformation. Yeah. There's clearly some serious energy involved here. Oh, absolutely. Those dimensions, the 56,000 kilometer tail, the 19,000 kilometer coma, they immediately signaled just how intensely active the comet became. Right. It means enormous amounts of gas and dust are being thrown off the nucleus. Mm -hmm. It's gone from stable, frozen ice to uh, rapid sublimation. Those ancient layers are just boiling off and getting swept away. So it's not just a pretty light show. No, no. It's a sign of really intense physics happening on a, frankly, colossal scale. It really makes you wonder, what's the engine driving this? What flips the switch so dramatically? That is the key question, isn't it? And the sources point to two main drivers. Solar heat and solar wind. Okay. The sun's power. Pretty much. They're the fundamental forces turning that dormant ice ball into the active spectacle we're seeing. So how does it work exactly, the heat and the wind? Well, as 3 Itel gets closer to the sun on its orbit, the solar heat obviously ramps up. Right. Makes sense. And this heat makes the comet's ices sublimate, turn straight from solid ice into gas. This gas, along with dust trapped in the ice, bursts out and forms that huge fuzzy coma. Okay. So heat makes the cloud. What about the tail? Ah, that's where the solar wind comes in. That's the constant stream of charged particles flowing out from the sun, always blowing. Okay. When this wind hits the gas and dust cloud, the coma, it pushes it. It exerts pressure, sweeping that material away from the sun. Ah, like a flag in the wind. Exactly like that. And that shapes it into the long tail, or in this case, that enormous 56,000 kilometer tail. So it's heat making the stuff and wind pushing it a two-step process. And thinking about its orbit, this process is probably just getting started, right? 
because the comet is heading towards its perihelion in October 2025. That's right. And perihelion, that's its closest point to the sun. Correct. So if it's already this spectacular in August, I mean, imagine what it will be like in October as it gets even closer to that heat source. Precisely. The activity we're seeing now, it's likely just the warm-up act. Wow. As it gets closer, the heating gets much more intense. Sublimation rates will, you know, probably increase exponentially. So an even bigger coma. A longer tail. Very likely. Brighter, bigger, potentially more complex structures in the tail, too. Perihelion is like peak performance time for a comet. Yep. That's when the solar heat and wind are strongest, and they really blast away those outer layers, revealing even more about what's inside. That's just incredible to visualize. Hmm. And this intense activity, the huge coma and tail we're seeing now. Yeah. It's not just temporary fireworks. You mentioned it gives us clues yeah. about its history, its origins. Yes, absolutely. It's like the comet is, I don't know, shedding its skin and showing us what's underneath. Yeah. What can we actually learn from that? Well, that gets to a really fascinating aspect of comets. They're like cosmic time capsules. Line capsules. Yeah. The gas and dust making up that coma and tail, that's material coming from deep inside the nucleus, material that's been frozen solid, basically unchanged, for billions of years, since the very beginning of the solar system. Billions of years. Wow. So by analyzing the light from that material, essentially its chemical fingerprint, scientists can figure out what it's made of. And that tells us directly about the conditions and the uh, the raw ingredients that were present in the giant cloud of gas and dust, the protoplanetary disk where the sun and planets originally form. So we're seeing samples of the stuff that built Earth. Pretty much. We get insights into the chemical mix of the early solar system, even complex organic molecules, the kinds that might have been delivered to the early Earth by comets. Oh, interesting. It helps us piece together the puzzle of how planets formed, what the building blocks were, and maybe even, you know, the ingredients needed for life. Every little particle flying off that comet is a tiny piece of ancient history. So this huge transformation of 3ILS, it's way more than just a pretty sight. It's like a live science experiment unfolding right in front of us. Exactly. The universe is basically serving up samples of its earliest moments, one puff of gas and dust at a time. Couldn't have said it better. Okay, so no. just to recap. We've watched Comet 3 i Atlas go from this quiet, compact structure mm. in July 2025 mm. to this absolutely magnificent active object in August, driven by the sheer power of the sun, its heat, and its wind. A truly dramatic evolution. And the speed and scale of it all are just mind-boggling. Gives us this amazing look at how dynamic things really are out there in space. And that's why observing these kinds of transient events, these active moments, is so valuable. Right. Comets like 3 i 8 list, they aren't just static museum pieces. They're active players. They're constantly interacting with their environment, evolving and carrying these incredibly old chemical signatures. Messages from the past. Yeah, essentially. Mm. Each outburst, each expanding coma it's like a living message from billions of years ago so as we wrap up this deep dive just think about the scale of change we've talked about here a comet transforming so massively in just one month it's remarkable it makes you wonder doesn't it if a distant comet can change like that going from compact to colossal no oh. what other objects might be undergoing their own huge transformations maybe just hidden from our view for now that's a fascinating thought and what could those hidden changes, when we finally see them, tell us about the very beginnings of everything? Maybe even about our own little place in this vast universe. Something to keep watching for, I guess. Keep questioning. The universe still has plenty of secrets. 